Good day, my name is Leslie Termesaisen and the purpose of this video is to discuss a point which is very often asked by people entering the aquaponics industry. Should I use clay pebbles or should I use stone in my grow beds? I'm going to take you through the advantages and disadvantages of the two options so that you can be better positioned to make the decision for yourself. If you have a look over here, we have some clay pebbles. These clay pebbles are made in a rotary kiln at about 600 degrees Celsius. Because the kiln is, is rotating, the pebbles tend to be circular or cylindrical in shape. Because of the very high temperature, the clay expands and bakes, resulting in a lightweight clay aggregate, which is also the acronym LEKA. The, there are several advantages to the clay pebbles. Most notably is the fact that it's very lightweight and therefore it's easy to work with. Also, it's inert, so it's not going to impact your water quality negatively at all. Unfortunately, however, the lightweight clay aggregate is also very expensive and this excludes it from use for many applications, certainly for commercial aquaponics. An additional disadvantage of the clay is that it is very light in weight. As a result, it offers no counterbalance advantage. So if you look at a plant such as this cauliflower, when this cauliflower grows to an adult size, it won't be perfectly symmetrical in terms of its growth left and right, front and back. Typically, a plant would grow more to the one side than the other. When it does that and it's rooted in clay, the mass of the plant will cause it to fall over. And the same is true for many other crops, such as brinjals and peppers and so forth as well. Um, an additional disadvantage of the clay is that it also tends to break. Because it's so brittle, those little bits that break off then get jammed in the foot valve or they get jammed in the impeller of your pump and they cause the pump to fail. A final disadvantage of the clay aggregate is that it tends to float on water for the first couple of days until it becomes fully saturated. Obviously during this time you can't use the flood and drain function of your grow beds because when the bed floods the media will fall out of the beds. The alternative option is to use a stone. Stone such as this between 20 and 40 mils in diameter it's angular, it's not circular, which perhaps is a disadvantage, but not a big disadvantage. This sort of stone works really well in aquaponics. The advantages include the fact that it is very inexpensive to purchase. The stone is widely used in the building industry um, and therefore it's also commonly available. Another advantage of the stone is that it is, it is very heavy, it has mass. So the disadvantage we discussed with the cauliflower a moment ago isn't true with stone because the stone provides the counterbalance mass that the plant needs in order to be able to stay upright. Disadvantages of the stone, however, again come back to weight primarily. Because it's heavy, it is more difficult to clean and periodically we do need to clean our grow beds. A final consideration with stone is that it may not be inert. So we need to be sure to test our stone prior to using it in the grow beds to ensure it doesn't have any alkalinity in it which will maintain a very high pH above the optimal range for plants. What I'm going to demonstrate now is how we test the stone to assess whether it is inert or not. If it's not inert it means that it's got a high alkalinity content which will in fact buffer the pH and hold it at a high level, higher than you want for your aquaponics system. So what we do is we use a glass, we place some stones inside the glass, this is stones from the quarry prior to purchasing them. And then we take some white vinegar and tip the white vinegar into the glass to cover the stones and then you watch for about five minutes. If there is no effervescing, then the stone is suitable for use. If, however, the stone starts effervescing, starts bubbling, forming bubbles that rise, then you know that the stone is unsuitable for use. 
once five minutes have passed we assess whether there are bubbles coming off the stones or not you'll see bubbles forming off in the stones and those bubbles rise to the surface uh, a small amount of bubbles indicates that it's not very alkaline if there is a lot of bubbles and a little bit of a froth forming on the surface then you know obviously it's very alkaline in either case it is unsuitable you want a situation such as is being demonstrated here where there is absolutely no bubble rising to the surface at all other than in the initial part of the five minutes you'll see a few bubbles that were trapped between the stones but if you just give the container a bit of a shake then those bubbles tend to come rise to the surface but after five minutes there should be no bubbles forming on the surface of the stones and there should be no bubbles rising to the surface then you know that stone is suitable for use in your aquaponics system i hope that you have found that this video on media options in aquaponics grow beds to be useful if you have please remember to hit the subscribe button and you're also welcome if you want additional information, if you want more detailed information, if you're looking for products and services, to refer to our website. The link is down below for the website. Thank you and happy aquaponicsing.